as our current stage of the economic collapse turns into a full-blown economic crisis, a projection that many economists warn could happen at any moment. Your ability to utilize the resources that you have will be a skill set that will set the haves far away from the have-nots during a disaster. Today, we're going to be talking about a jewel thief. A jewel thief, in its simplest description, is a wonder of ingenuity. It is an oscillating, voltage-boosting circuit that will allow you to power LED lights and other low-power objects on batteries that have been discarded by millions of people around you and sources of electricity that have long since been considered useless. As a crisis event takes place, flashlights will be used to their fullest capacity by millions of people around the world. The single-use batteries being discarded after each and every draining, often on the side of the road or in piles of discarded trash. From this trash, you will continue to power your light sources, not creating enough light to power a spotlight or to man a search party, but enough luminance to provide your family and your loved ones with comfort and security as the long and dangerous days turn into nights of continued uncertainty. To not bore you to death before a disaster, the ins and outs of how a jewel thief works is it increases the voltage of a power source, even one that would seem fully drained under normal means. It does this by changing the linear low voltage power signal into a series of rapid pulses at a higher voltage. This allows you to power items like an LED bulb that would normally require a higher voltage and more power. Take this LED for instance. Most white LEDs run at a forward voltage of 3.3 volts. This AA battery only provides 1.5 volts. Hooking the LED directly up to even a fully charged AA battery still will not provide enough forward voltage to turn on the LED. Now this is a battery that we would consider to be dead. I ran it out of life completely myself this morning, and you see that it is not enough power to light this torch. That's where the Jewel Thief comes in. Taking the same battery and hooking it up to your Jewel Thief, you will see that this apparently dead power source, useless in a flashlight, still has enough resonant power and voltage to power an LED that under most circumstances would need two 1.5 volt AA batteries and a resistor to function. So how do you make one? Whether you're in a long duration emergency like the economic collapse that's ongoing in Venezuela, the civil war that we're seeing in Syria, or a six month government instituted martial law like we have seen in Jammu and Kashmir, there will be no shortage of broken or otherwise non-working electronics that people will seek to either discard or to use to repair other more essential items. It is from this great repository of parts and once broken goods that you will find yourself a jewel thief. To make a jewel thief, you're gonna need six items. An LED, any LED will work, but having one with substantial leads will make things easier. A transistor, a transistor works like a floodgate, allowing power to flow through both leads when the channel of one lead receives enough power to open the gate. A small transistor like this 2N4401 will work just fine. A 1 kilo ohm resistor. This is going to keep the LED from spiking and blowing out from a higher voltage and too much power. You can probably use anything above a 500 ohm resistor and up to a 2 kilo ohm resistor, but you'll see a lifespan and brightness change. Some small gauge insulated wire. This stuff is everywhere, so finding it during the disaster is not going to be a problem. A dead battery. And at the literal core of this circuit, a toroidal inductor with a ferrite core. You might not know what it is now, but as you start taking apart electronics to repair them, you will find these literally everywhere. If you don't have a way to solder during a crisis or don't know how to yet, don't worry, that's not going to stop you from repairing or making projects during an emergency. It's just the best way to mend electronics and provides the longest lifespan. In a pinch or in a disaster, tape, hot glue, or anything else that has a high measure of resistance will work for non-essential and non-mains power fixes and repairs. First, take your toroid core and strip it of any wires that it has, being careful not to damage the core itself. Next, take your small gauge wire and twist one end together. If this wire is of the same color insulator, make sure to tape both ends of one of the wires so that you can keep track of the different strands. Begin passing this through and around the core, not too densely, but enough to have a little space in between each pass. When you get near the end, leave about a pinky space of uncovered core. 
Now take an opposing strand from each side. If you're using two different colored wires, take one of each color from opposing sides and trim the insulation of the end and wrap them together. Solder them if you're soldering, glue or tape them if not. Take the middle lead of your transistor and solder or otherwise connect it to one side of your one kilo ohm resistor. If you strip these pieces from a circuit board, you might need to lengthen the leads with wire or use a PCB board to make more use of them. Now connect the other end of your resistor to either one of the loose ends of your wires wrapped around the toroid core. Separate the ends of your transistor if possible and connect your LED to one side of the transistor. If your LED has longer leads, the longer side will be positive. If the leads have been trimmed, the lead nearest the flat edge of the LED will be negative. Mark the positive side if possible just to help you remember. Now connect the remaining loose wire from your toroid core to the positive side of the LED and resistor. Connect the negative LED lead to the negative side of your battery or power source and the wound wire from the first step to the positive side, thus completing the circuit and providing light. You can do a lot with a project like this. You can encase it into an Altoid tin and use a push button to turn it on and off. You can add a potentiometer allowing you to change the resistance and brightness of the LED or you can make it flash with a 555 timer and another circuit, providing a long-lasting beacon for rescue and recovery. These are just some of the ways that you can utilize a jewel thief in what will appear to millions as broken and discarded items during a crisis. For more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel, hit that alert button to make sure that you get an alert each time a new video goes up, like the video, ask any questions that you have in comments, and please share this video on other preparedness websites. This is Brad Harris with Full Spectrum Survival. As always, stay safe and keep watch.